C-O-M-P. Composition. This video is about composition. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Dax Brule, and with around three years of photography experience under my belt, I have learned one thing. Your megapixel count, your enthusiasm towards photography, your new RF lens, none of it matters if you can't nail down your composition. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So let's do this. Number one is you gotta know the rules of photography and what an eye. See this eye? What does this like to see? What is natural to us human beings, homo sapiens? Let me talk you through a couple of these rules. Number one, the rule of thirds, the main one. I talk about this all the time. You're gonna take your frame and you're gonna split it into nine equal parts. And then you're gonna wanna put your subject on one of these equal parts. It just makes it so much more interesting. I don't know why, but the eye enjoys it. So make sure you do it. Leading lines is taking two lines that are gonna lead up to a subject. So let's say there's a huge handrail that leads up to this amazing castle. You're gonna wanna lead those lines up to that castle make sure you frame it and compose it correctly focus pulling or subject isolation this is using a lower aperture or doing this in post and putting focus on one thing for example here what do you see first my eyeball 100% you see my eyeball first because I'm putting focus on it everything in the background is going to be blurred use this rule super effective to pull out portraits symmetry you know people just love symmetry this huge satisfying culture is coming out with all these satisfying videos of play-doh and things like that for example this is a nice shot because everything is symmetrical if you split a line down the middle most of the things on both sides kind of even out other than you know my ugly face adding depth to your photos putting things in the foreground putting things in the background changing the focus this really helps create depth in the photo and what depth is if people don't know because it's a pretty vaguely used term is showing distance in a photo so if you put leaves in front of your landscape photo which is a telephoto on a, on a mountain and the leaves are, are out of focus you can tell that that mountain is about a kilometer in that direction while these leaves are right in front of so that's what depth is and you really want to create that so it makes the, the subject look like it's more in 3d space patterns super huge kind of like symmetry but recreating patterns that's why all these architecture photographers are killing it because it's pattern you know just taking a photo of your tiles is a nice photo because there's patterns of repeated things it's a nice look i don't know exactly how it works but looking for patterns in photography and finally color palettes this has less to do with composition but it's something to keep in mind when composing your photo because you're only going to have access to the colors that you've captured in your camera unless you want to make it look really weird and, and out of this world so look for color palette look for things you know objects that are kind of complementary to the other thing a nice blue sky with a nice orange road that's a teal and orange color palette and this makes you have to learn a bit of color theory but there's a bunch of simple videos you can check out on youtube about color theory just search color theory and you'll get a 10 minute video showing you the basics that you need to know so those are just the scratching the surface for the rules. There are so many more rules that you could know about photography. There's so many rules that I don't even know about photography that I'm still learning. But this is in the last three years, I've learned the majority of those. I know all of those and there's plenty more to know. You just gotta know your rules because that's really what composition is all about is doing things that the human eye is, you know, scientifically proven to enjoy. Filling the frame with what you like. This is my second tip for you guys. This is the biggest rule that I always follow and I never break is fill the frame with what you like you think that the road is ugly but you want to take a sunset but you think you need to keep the road in it because you know it's a natural photo no shoot directly up shoot like this bang sunset i do that all the time because i think that the road is ugly and doesn't add to the photo only put in the photo what you like whether that's cropping it out later or cropping it out while you have the chance and you're shooting the photo shoot what you like keep out what you don't like and what doesn't add to the photo it's the simplest rule of composition is shoot what you like thinking of the angles that no one sees. Let's say you walk up to Marine Lake. Bang, you take a photo. You know how many people have taken that exact same photo? So many people have taken that exact same photo. You need to think of compositions that no one's ever done. That's why all these drone shots have been taking over because you don't usually see shots, aerial shots from above. That's why they look so good is because it's composition that no one has seen before. So you need to think of it. You need to think of lying down on the floor. You need to think of going upside down. You, think, you need to think of climbing that street pole to get that shot because you have to 
to look at angles that no one has ever looked at. That's how you're going to stand out in this era. That's how I've done my best to stand out is thinking of compositions and things in the frame that people have never thought of. So it's a simple rule, but you need to follow. So finally, I'm going to lead it with how I would approach a scene and what I would look for. Okay, guys, so I'm going to walk you through how I approach a photography scene, what I look for to get different angles and different perspectives than regular people. I'm going to walk you through. So this is pretty much my scene. I'm going to, you know, same principles apply even though we're still in just a room. But let's say I'm photographing this room. It's a bit messy, but I'm going to show you guys how I approach it. So first thing I would do is walk in and think, what would a regular person take a photo of in this room? What, what angle, what height? How would a regular person take a photo? What I would think is someone would probably come in here, maybe see that bike there, grab their camera up to eye level, regular height, kind of like a six foot kind of guy, and snap a photo. That's what you want to avoid. You want to avoid what regular people are doing. So first I would look and I would be like, okay, what do I want to photograph in this room? What do I want to get out of this photo? Let's say you're approaching a landscape. What do I really want to show off? What do I want my subject to be? Let's say it's a huge mountain. Let's say it's a nice lake. Let's say, you know, it's something like that. You have to think. So for example, here, let's say this guitar was here in this room and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna photograph this guitar. And now you have to think of how do you want to photograph this guitar? What angle would someone never take a photo of? Um, and you want to keep in mind also all those rules we talked about earlier, rule of third, symmetry, patterns, color palettes. Let me show you how I would go through photographing this guitar. I'm just going to place this guitar on the bed and I'm going to take a nice photo down the the center of the strings. A good tip for sure is to put your eye to the viewfinder and look through that because that's really what the photo is going to end up doing. So whether you're at a landscape situation, you're planning a shoot for models, things like that, you want to go through the situation with your eye in the viewfinder because in the end that's what it's going to look like. So that's a tip I'll use all the time when I'm composing a photo. Get the composition down through the viewfinder, not through your regular eyes. Another really vital tip is when you're shooting, you're obviously going to not get great composition off the start. You're not always going to get that perfect shot right off the start. So it's important. It's important. It's key that you keep on keep on taking more photos and more photos and slowly that composition composition will become perfect. So slowly just kind of practice and take a couple shoots, try try different things out and slowly look all come together. Also, play around with your settings. Try different, you know, apertures to get different depths of fields, different ISOs. The exposure triangle is not only about your exposure, but it's also about depth of field, ISO, graininess, sharpness, all that stuff has in play. So play around. That's all what I can tell you about composition is it takes practice. If you have a flippy screen, it's really helpful to get those crazy compositions that you're not used to. But if you don't have a flippy screen, what I would tell you is if you could display your phone and connect it to your your camera, it really helps you get those tricky compositions that you can't see. And then you can also just kind of micro adjust the camera while looking at the screen. It's like a monitor. Here I'm displaying a bunch of symmetry because of the lines, a bit of patterns, a bit of color palette as well. So from there, I'd probably just take a bunch of different compositions of this guitar. If I had a small enough camera, I'd even try to shove it in the guitar, shooting out through the strings. And that's what it comes down to. It comes down to getting those angles that no one would ever, not only think of, but ever see. For example, like when I think of photographing this room, I think of photographing it from a Spider-Man perspective, from up top shooting down because no one is ever shooting like that. So, you know, get out a get out a C stand, get out a, a boom pole, uh, attach your camera and take some overhead shots. Like for example, down on this piano or down on this chair, get the perspectives that no one is ever taking. So it'll take time to practice, to learn these things and become really, really good at them. It's taken me a bit of time, three years and I still have plenty to go, but just keep practicing them and you will become super good. But I wonder, question of the day for you guys, how many of these tips did you know? How many of these rules did you know? Comment in the section comment in the section comment below how many of the rules you knew i would love to know and thank you guys for watching that video hope you guys learned something gently tap that like button if you enjoyed subscribe new videos every single week hit that notification bell ding, 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 ding. if you want to be notified every single time i drop a video creators keep creating see you guys in the next one peace